Greetings, I'm Lauren, a 32-year-old living and working in California. Recently, I went through a tough breakup with my husband because of his betrayal and some family issues. We're in the process of getting a divorce, and he's struggling with it, but I've found a way to move forward. He used to work as a bartender at a well-known restaurant, but let's keep the details private. During my internship days, enjoying my newfound independence, I thought of taking my parents out for a special meal. We ended up at a fancy restaurant nearby, but now I wish I had picked a different spot. Despite some awkward moments, my parents were excited about my job in the city, and that really boosted my confidence. Finding an affordable second-hand apartment in Las Vegas turned out to be a stroke of luck. It was owned by an elderly man who was relocating to his daughter's place in Detroit, my hometown. The four-bedroom apartment was quite decent, and the affordability of it all made it even more appealing. One time, I brought my folks to the restaurant, where my ex, Jerry, used to have a job. When we got there, a lively party was happening, but it was okay because I had reserved a spot. We got our own little area and had a relaxed conversation about our jobs and daily lives. The surprise came when a waiter brought us drinks, and when I inquired, he gestured toward a tall, friendly, blonde guy working at the counter, serving drinks and chatting with people. At first, I didn't really notice much, but later on, I saw him looking at me in the eyes. I'm not sure why, but my face turned red. My parents picked up on the atmosphere and nudged me to go talk to him while they enjoyed themselves. Feeling a bit shy, I went up to the counter. He seemed really good-looking to me. So, uh, how much for the extra drinks? We didn't actually order them. It's on the house, ma'am. That's really nice of you, he said. I don't really need anything for free. I'll pay for it. My parents are here, and I don't want them to think otherwise. Consider it a little gift. Is this your first time at this restaurant? Yep, I'm new here. Just started as an intern. Oh, really? Same here. I joined about two months ago. Cool. It's nice to have someone like me around. Before we knew it, we were laughing at each other's jokes. Jerry was friendly, and my 25-year-old heart was happy. I'm usually shy and keep to myself, not having many friends during school and university. But Jerry somehow made me feel comfortable, like I could talk to him easily. Maybe even enjoy a drink or three when work gets boring or stressful. Lauren, it was so nice getting to know you, Jerry said with a smile. Jerry's parents lived in New Zealand, where he was born. However, he later moved to California, his dream city. Despite his deep affection for his family, he felt a bit nervous about them. He frequently urged them to visit, but there was a catch. He kept our relationship a secret from them, always telling them he was with a colleague from work. Um, you never mentioned me to your parents. Is that a problem? I asked, feeling a bit uneasy. Well, it's not really a big deal. They don't need to know everything. There will be plenty of time to introduce you to them later. Jerry responded, trying to downplay the situation. Okay, I hope I'm not causing you any issues by being kept a secret, I said, hoping for reassurance. I enjoy being with you, and I think it's important for us to be honest with each other. We're not officially a couple, so I don't feel the need to rush things. If our connection deepens, I may consider making some changes, but it's not my main focus right now. Your words hurt like thorns on a rose. I know we weren't exclusive, but your mixed signals confused me. Despite that, you took me to nice places and showed me around the city, making me feel free and happy. As the fall ended, Jerry became more romantic, adding to my confusion. I liked him, but he never showed clear interest. He called us partners in crime, leaving me unsure about our relationship. Meanwhile, my work was recognized, and I got a raise. We celebrated with a picnic, but I felt uncomfortable when Jerry held my hand. I asked him about us, and he said we were friends. However, spending so much time together made me question if we were just friends— when Jerry expressed his desire for a deeper commitment, I needed time to think. He said he'd wait, but not for long, as he's impatient. He moved in with me, and when he presented a ring, my conflicted feelings intensified. I agreed, and it seemed like those were the only words ready to escape. The proposal was impressive, making me feel really important. I was glad it was Jerry. Unfortunately, Jerry lost his job only six months after our wedding. After the official stuff was over, Jerry happily moved into my place. We spent some time organizing the space to fit everything. My parents were happy, but also unsure, and I can't blame them. 
Jerry was the type of husband who genuinely cared about me, but didn't show it much in front of others. During parties, he sometimes didn't introduce me to his friends unless I took the first step. Surprisingly, he hadn't informed his parents about our relationship yet. Concerned, I asked, shouldn't we tell your family soon? He responded, not now, we'll do it in time. Why are you always so impatient? Frustrated, I questioned, again? Why not now, Jerry? Something seems off. What's going on with us? He replied, I have a lot to explain, and I just need some time. Don't get involved in stuff you don't grasp, he warned. I didn't really get what he was saying, but I stayed patient. I just wanted him to notice me. Occasionally, he'd hang out with his friends without telling me, and I'd get his calls after he'd already arrived. This kept happening until he unexpectedly lost his job, saying he had a disagreement with a co-worker and things got messy. He told me he had to borrow some money until he could land a new job. I discovered him in the bedroom, tears streaming down like a young kid. I was curious about what troubled him. Forget about the money for now, just tell me what's happening. It's urgent, and I assure you I'll repay you once I secure a job, all right? I worked on improving our home, making fixes and adjustments. My parents even sent some money to assist in managing our household more effectively. I was excited to be on my own, feeling independent. But you know, money sometimes slips away quickly. I also needed some support, and as much as I adore Jerry, I hoped he could assist me soon. One day, he dropped a bomb on me. Hey, I've got something to tell you. Um, what's up? My parents. They're coming to visit us. Huh, okay. Did they mention when? In five days, I've sorted everything out. I just needed a small favor. Sure, what is it? Could you please tell my parents that I bought this apartment and all the other things? They don't know I don't have a job, and it'd be embarrassing if they found out. I know it sounds strange, but my parents are judgmental and scary. It'd be awkward if they knew I lost my job. Please understand. Okay, fine. But just temporary, okay? You know I'm bad at lying. They won't find out, don't worry, just try, please. Whatever you need. I wasn't thrilled about his request, but I had no other option. I thought maybe it was a temporary situation, so I let it go. Suddenly, Jerry became very affectionate, taking care of me with breakfast and dinner. It was enjoyable, but it felt odd. I wanted a few days off to spend time with his family. My boss granted me five days without cutting my pay, acknowledging my hard work. The day his parents were set to arrive, I was nervous but knew I had to present my best self. His parents, tall and blonde like him, seemed intimidating. But once they entered the room, their initial disgust turned into approval. They scrutinized every corner, judging the household I had carefully built. However, my credit score was non-existent. It's okay. The place looks good, and I adore the small decorations. It's mostly your decision, with a little assistance from Lauren. Lauren is my wife, by the way. What's your job? She inquired. I work in content editing, I responded. So, you're a writer, basically. Well, not exactly an author, but yes. Why don't you take a seat and unwind? I'll fetch you some food. Isn't that Lauren's duty, dear? She must be keeping you busy. Oh dear, I enjoy helping out. Lauren, why don't we chat and get to know each other? I'll grab a snack. I sat quietly as they looked around, feeling uneasy and unsure of what to say or do. I found myself just staring at their displeased expressions, realizing they weren't fond of me. Your son works in a corporate office, he must be quite exhausted, mentioned Jerry's mother. Do you handle everything for him, attending to all his needs? Yes, I do. He's earning well, I replied. Considering the state of your home, can you financially support him? Asked Jerry's mother. Jerry mentioned you haven't been able to spend much time with him, she continued. Is that true? What have you contributed besides covering his expenses? Feeling interrupted, I said, Excuse me. Jerry suddenly interrupted us with a coffee break. I couldn't help but notice the worn out and almost broken cup he handed me while he used my finest cups for his parents. No snacks for me, but a whole plate of Cheez-Its for them. So how's everything? What made you two decide to get married? Wasn't it a bit quick? Well, I wanted to marry her because I really like her. You know, just for that reason. Yeah, yeah. How was the trip? No one replied, and it made me feel really uneasy. I glanced at Jerry, and he gave me a puzzled look. 
We both stood up and headed to our room. What was that all about? What do you mean? Their behavior. Why are they acting like that? I wasn't sure if you spoke up, so I continued responding to their questions. You noticed they didn't reply when I asked something. Perhaps they're worn out from the journey. They'll be fine. How about we plan an outing for them today? Can I use your card? This situation doesn't feel right, Jerry. They believe I don't contribute much for you, and it hurts. I understand. Just a couple more days, sweetheart. They'll leave soon. Okay. The night was awful. Jerry borrowed my card to take his parents out, and I felt left out. I roamed through the stores, feeling confused. I wasn't sure if everything was okay. Reflecting on past decisions, my hasty marriage stood out. People often make such choices without much thought. I sighed and swiped through my phone. My work buddy had sent me six messages. I considered giving him a call. Hey, what's going on? I noticed you didn't respond. Dealing with a bit of a situation here, and I think I messed up. I'm worried about Jerry. How about we catch up tomorrow? Oh, never mind, you've got a couple of days off. I can't make it anyway, Jerry's parents are in town. Surprisingly, he finally reached out to them, Gerald. Okay, my bad. How are they feeling about me? They're not thrilled. As I continued chatting, footsteps approached from behind. Hearing Isabella's angry approach, I swiftly ended the call. Isabella confronted me with a glare, accusing. Enjoying taking money from my son, are you? You've been relying on him for so long, and he's devastated. Did he mention that he sees you as a burden? My hands turned icy, and I couldn't find the words. It felt surreal. Jerry had advised me to act, but we never discussed this level of pretending. I had always been the support, maintaining the apartment, and looking after him. I heard you're claiming half the ownership. That's not happening. Let him have full control of this place. Control? Half? I'm not sure I understand. You won't be sharing this apartment with him. Don't try to exploit my son for his wealth. I should have realized it sooner. Gather your things and leave. We don't support this marriage. I looked back and noticed Jerry and my father-in-law chatting happily. Tears filled my eyes, nerves skyrocketed, and my throat felt parched. I needed to handle the situation with Jerry later. I forced a smile, but he didn't respond. Tired, we returned home. I wanted to talk, but he was occupied with his parents. When he eventually joined me in the living room, he switched on the TV. I sat down next to him, dropping the act. Can we just be real for a moment? Sure. I love you. Me too. So, this family plan you made, it's not permanent, right? Listen, Lauren, maybe you should go back to Detroit for a while until I figure things out. My parents will stick around for a bit. What are you trying to say? You heard me. That marked our final conversation. The silence that followed was deafening. Despite my pleas, he remained unyielding. He went to bed without a word. I spent the entire night in tears at Gerald's place. Thankfully, his wife kindly allowed me to stay. You still have the power to negatively impact his life. He's unemployed and using your credit card, Gerald pointed out. Let's take a different approach. Transfer the apartment ownership to him. He won't handle the bills and the debt will catch up with him. But what if he refuses? I questioned. He won't. He believes he can escape consequences, Gerald assured. And what about our marriage? Come on, you deserve something better, he encouraged. I discussed the strategy with Gerald. It was challenging, but if executed properly, it could succeed. Jerry called five times that day. I messagged him, informing him of my decision. The following day, we met at a nearby cafe. He apologized, but I chose to remain silent. I understand things are messed up right now. Go to Detroit and stay with your parents for the time being. I'll handle things here, and later, I'll come to pick you up. Once you're settled, I'll try to find a job. Can I please keep your card for now? Oh, and by the way, I've decided to give you ownership of the apartment. I'll take care of all the bills, and later, you can pay me back. Are you sure about this? Yes, I want to make things right, I promise. I realized he accepted the deal without considering my hard work. I knew it was over, and he seemed clueless. I went back to Detroit, explained everything to my parents, and cried a lot. They were furious, but didn't scold me. 
I learned a valuable lesson, and it was time to take action. I blocked my card that Jerry was using. After transferring the ownership, I made sure not to have any written documents claiming I'd continue to pay bills. Let's see how he handles the debt peeling up. Gerald offered me a cozy four-bedroom apartment near my office in Las Vegas. I accepted it gratefully. I went to court with my family, working on divorce papers to be sent soon. I cut off all financial and emotional ties. Jerry, who thought he could manipulate and use me, was in for a surprise. After two months, I received an unknown call. It was Isabella, Jerry's mother, apologizing and crying. She explained Jerry made a mistake, and now he's in trouble. His card was declined, and he received warning letters for unpaid bills. Despite having a job, he couldn't manage it. I know we made a mistake, but it wasn't on purpose. Could you please assist us with a bit of money, just for the plane tickets? Unfortunately, I can't send money at the moment. I'll send something different later. What? Well, I'll send you divorce papers. I ended the call. It was amusing how Jerry couldn't even manage to pay for his parents' plane tickets home. Clearly, it was challenging for him, especially since he was probably intending to bring them here permanently, considering he had to take care of their bills back in New Zealand. I started helping him with money, but he chose to own up and told his folks that he was in charge of the entire apartment and everything inside. Now, he'll be getting caution notices until the government stops supporting him financially. He has to pay everything in one go. I'm curious to see how he'll handle it. I'm not bothered anymore. Jerry was a newcomer in California, and he couldn't count on assistance from anyone. The restaurant where he worked didn't like him because he created problems. In the meantime, I got a cool new place and three cute dogs from Gerald. The divorce papers are already on their way. I understand these things take time. Jerry keeps calling me, saying sorry and asking for help every night, but I just hang up without really listening. On a brighter note, I got a promotion to editor recently, and now life seems more stable for me.